Hello everybody, in this clip we pass from lattice cones in a covariant manner to affine toric varieties. First we have to discuss a bit lattice cones. Let sigma n be a lattice cone, that means n is lattice and sigma is a cone in the associated rational vector space. The dual of this lattice cone is sigma dual in M, where M is a dual lattice and the dual cone consists of all linear forms that evaluate non-negatively on the whole sigma. Let us look at an example. The cone sigma generated by 1, 0 and 1, 2 in C2 is a lattice cone. Its dual cone is the following. We take the dual cone generated by 2, minus 1 and 0, 1, which also lives in Z2. And here we identify Z2 with its own dual lattice via the standard bilinear form. Now, given a lattice cone omega in M, we obtain an associated cone monoid. This consists of all the lattice points of omega and is, with respect to addition, a submonoid of the lattice M. Here's an example. We take, again, this cone, now we call it omega, generated by 2, minus 1, and 0, 1. And our question is about the lattice monoid. That means all the lattice points inside this cone. This monoid is generated by three vectors. We expect for sure the vectors lying on the bounding rays, but we need one more, namely uh, one zero uh, lying in the middle. So these three vectors generate the monoid in the sense that any lattice point inside the cone is a non-negative integral linear combination over these three points. This is part of a general effect for a general lattice cone omega n, the cone monoid is always finitely generated. Moreover, if the dimension of omega is the dimension of n q, that means that omega is of full dimension, then the cone monoid generates the lattice as a group. The monoid algebra associated with a lattice cone omega in M. It's just a monoid algebra associated with a cone monoid. That means as a vector space, it is the free vector space of all the symbols chi u, where u stems from the cone monoid. And the multiplication is defined by chi u times chi u prime is chi u plus u prime. Here yeah, are the basic facts about these monoid algebras. Let omega and m be a lattice cone. Then by construction, this monoid algebra is a subalgebra of Cm, the Laurent polynomial algebra defined by the lattice m. In particular, it is integral. Moreover, it turns out to be normal and it is finitely generated. If the dimension of the cone equals the dimension of mq, so omega is of full dimension, then the monoid algebra and the Laurent polynomial algebra share the same quotient fields. We are ready for the central construction of this clip. It starts with a pointed lattice cone sigma in n. Pointed implies that the dual cone is of full dimension. Now, we know that the monoid algebra with this lattice cone is integral, normal, and finitely generated. So if we pass to the spectrum, we obtain an irreducible normal variety, which we denote by x sigma. Moreover, as a spectrum of the Laurent polynomial algebra Cm, we obtain the torus Tn, which we already know, and we have a base point x0 in x sigma. This is the point d 
defined by the property that all the chi u evaluate to 1 on this point. Now, in this situation, look at the following homomorphism of algebras. It goes from the monoid algebra to the tensor product, monoid algebra, tensor Laurent polynomial algebra, and then the chi u to chi u tensor chi u. Something similar we have already seen. This turns out to be the co-morphism of an action of the torus Tn on x sigma. And, indeed, we end up with a toric variety x sigma Tn x naught. The way we constructed our affine toric variety out of a given lattice cone is maybe a bit abstract. We want to put hands on things. Let us see how this can be done. Here's an example. Consider again the cone sigma generated by the vectors 1, 0, 1, 2 in Z2. The associated cone monoid sigma dual intersected Z2 is generated by three vectors, namely 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0. That means that the associated Monoid algebra has also three generators, namely the chi ue stemming from these vectors. Once we have generators of an algebra, this gives us an epimorphism from a polynomial ring onto that algebra. Here it is from the polynomial ring in three variables onto our algebra, sending the ice variable to the ice generator of the monoid algebra. Such an epimorphism of a polynomial ring gives an embedding of the associated spectra. That means, in our case, x sigma, the spectrum of this monoid algebra, embeds into C3 via the three generators of the monoid algebra. We also know how the torus, in this case T2, acts namely via these as characters. Now looking at the exponent vectors, this means that T applied to Z is, in the first component we have Z vector, that means T1 square over T2 times Z1, and similarly T2, Z2, T1, Z3. Moreover, observe that we have a relation u1 plus u2 equals 2u3 in the monoid. This relation gives a relation in the monoid algebra and thus a defining equation for our embedded x, z1, z2 minus z3 square. What we have just done is a general recipe. Take any pointed lattice cone sigma in Cn. Suppose we know the generators u1 up to ur of the cone monoid. Then this gives us an embedding of x sigma into Cr, just applying the R generators of the monoid algebra and the torus action is via taking these as characters. So t times c is chi u1 of t, c1 up to chi u r of t, zr. We are going to make our construction factorial. First, what is a map of lattice cones? This is just a homomorphism sending the one cone into the other. Now, Given such a map of pointed lattice cones, also the dual map is the map of the dual lattice cones. That means it sends one dual cone into the other. This is, allows us to define a homomorphism between the associated monoid algebras, sending chi u prime to chi f dual of u prime. 
Similarly, we proceeded earlier in the setting of tori, that means from the group algebra into the other group algebra. And if we pass to the spectra, we obtain morphisms of the varieties associated with the monoidal algebras, that means our toric varieties. We obtain a homomorphism of the tori, and altogether gives us a toric morphism from the toric variety x t x naught associated with this lattice cone into the toric variety x prime t prime x naught prime associated with that lattice cone. Here is a final theorem summarizing everything. In total, we obtain two covariant functors from the one world into the other and back being essentially inverse to each other. From the pointed lattice cones we to the normal affine toric varieties, we just perform our construction sigma n goes to x sigma t n x naught. And f goes to the toric morphism just constructed. And the way back is the following. If you have an affine toric variety, then we know that this x has a unique limit point with a closed torus on it, and we send it to the convergence cone of that point, and this is a lattice cone in the lattice of one parameter subgroups of t, and if we have a toric morphism phi, phi tilde, then we send it to the push forward of one parameter subgroups via phi tilde. See you in the next clip.